You ready? This is Jeff, our chief of design. Uh, and Jeff and the team have done just an incredible job of being the driving force behind our products. Uh, we've been working together since well before the R1, so it is so amazing, Jeff, to see this, and to you and the team, amazing work. Thank you. So it is so awesome to show this. Uh, I've been waiting for this for a while. And there's a lot to talk about here. The, the vehicle combines capability, performance, utility, storage, functionality in a way that we think just really fits right into a, a huge customer need and a huge need within the market. The vehicle size, uh, the, the vehicle capability really has been optimized around enabling, as I said, and inspiring all those adventures. And so we're gonna walk through the vehicle, but just starting here at the front, uh, in the front of the vehicle, we have a large front storage trunk. Uh, for those that are familiar with R1, of course, this should be uh, very relatable. But this is great for putting luggage, backpacks, your gear. Um, it's one of the most used storage areas of our R1 vehicle. We get to see the data on how all of our owners are using it. But it is just a, an awesome setup. And of course, this also serves to support a lot of the front safety in the vehicle in terms of the, the crash structure that you saw in those R1 videos. Now, if we go around the side of the vehicle, uh, it's, it's hard to see without sitting in it, but so much effort has gone into making sure the packaging, not just in the front row, but also in the second row, creates this really airy, really comfortable, really spacious experience. Something that um, really is world class. There's nothing quite like it in this size of vehicle where you get in and you feel so comfortable and it feels so inviting. Uh, and we're gonna take a look at the interior in a second. But first, just walk around the back. We did a lot of work to create something that builds a really open air experience. And you just saw, or maybe you saw, these quarter windows pop out. And what that does is we leverage the negative pressure off the back of the vehicle uh, to pull natural air through. And it creates this beautiful open air feeling experience. And then the rear glass, which you just saw drop, also opens. And now the rear glass opening, it, it literally feels like an open air experience. But this gives you an ability to put. This, this, you can put surfboards, you can put longer gear. Uh, and as you just saw, the second row seats fold flat, but also the first row seats fold flat. And the first row seats folding flat. That gives you, when, you know, if you're driving the vehicle, you can put long things in very easily. But if you're not driving the vehicle, let's say you're camping or staying right in the vehicle, it creates this awesome in-vehicle camping experience with an inflatable mattress. Um, so walking around here to the side, you're, you're thinking to yourself, well, what's, how does the vehicle size? You're probably looking at me, I'm about six foot one, trying to figure out how does this compare to an R1? Well, well, we'll tell you, it's about 400 millimeters shorter than an R1S. 
And uh, in addition to being shorter, it's quite a bit uh, or shorter in wheelbase, it's also lower in height. Uh, and it makes it, it fits into any garage, it fits into tight spaces, really maneuverable. But to look at it in a driving environment is really helpful. So we'll show you it here next to an R1S. It looks awesome. It looks really <laughs> like, you know, just you know, two family members out for a stroll. <laughs> I love that. Um, so let's take a look at the inside. And there's, uh, when we think about the design of an inside of in interior of the vehicle, uh, a lot of that ties to just what's in the um, what's in the materials, what's in the packaging, what does it make you feel? What's that environment feel like? And so we spent a lot of time working through those materials and the overall packaging to create an experience that is as inviting as, as one could imagine. And we have a lot of feedback from R1. And one of the points of feedback was a desire for a glove box. <laughs> and we, we had lots of reasons to not have one. But on, on, on R2, we over-delivered, and we put two glove boxes in. <laughs> the other thing, I mean, there's lots to see here, but the, one of the things that's so, so exciting is the way we've looked at the controls. And we have these really nice, large wheels in the uh, scroll wheels and the steering wheel. There's dynamic haptic, haptic feedback, so it allows us to adjust what it's feeling like when you're scrolling, and it's, it's magical. It takes our existing scroll wheel and really up-levels it to a degree that's hard to fully appreciate unless you're sitting in the car. Now, jumping back out, uh, a lot of work went into the doors, move the speaker out of the door, gives us space for a large water bottle here, and of course, it wouldn't be a Rivian if we have a flashlight in the door. So. Really love that, super handy. Um, so now, how, how does this set up in terms of how it functions? And we built an entirely new platform to underpin this vehicle. Uh, a lot of work went into driving manufacturing cost efficiency. And it's built around a, a 4695 cell. So 40, it's a cylindrical cell, 46 millimeters in diameter, 95 millimeters tall. It's a much larger cell than the 21 millimeter diameter uh, cell that we have in in R1 today, and that cell's integrated into a highly structural battery pack. So the battery pack in the floor actually makes up a big part of the vehicle structure. The top of the battery pack is actually the floor of the vehicle. So a lot of these innovations that we're driving into how we build the vehicle are you know, core to us making sure the price point can be really affordable. We'll get to that later. Um, but at the, from a drivetrain point of view, oh, we have a single motor, rear wheel driver variant, we have a dual motor, one motor in the front, one motor in the back, all wheel drive variant. And then we have a tri-motor, two motors in the back, one in the front. And in the highest performance variants of the vehicle, zero to 16, well under three seconds. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's very quick. Um, and then all those motor combinations uh, can achieve over 300 miles in range. So, so much, so much of what a Rivian is, is, is capturing the dynamics of the vehicle. And we, we needed to make sure that all the decisions we made in the aggregate, the suspension, the drivetrain, the battery positioning, the packaging of the vehicle, delivered something that drove like nothing else. Something that was exciting on-road, something that was incredibly capable off-road, but had the everyday refinement and usability uh, to work if you're parking it in San Francisco or driving it in New York. And so that focus on dynamics is so embedded in, in our culture as an organization uh, and embedded, of course, into our products. Now, we talked about the vertically integrated electronics we built that enable this amazing software platform that we've seen in R1. We take that even further in R2. Uh, we talked about how the packaging and the design of the, the structure allows us to achieve really amazing, uh, you know, amazing manufacturability. But we've also focused a lot on sensors and the compute in our vehicle. And this has 11 cameras, five radars, you know, four radars in the corner, one long range radar in the front, which we couple with our new much higher compute platform, which will enable this to, enable this to have a very high level of self-driving. And for us, that represents being able to get on the highway, take your hands off the wheel, 
eyes off the road and, and truly operate it where you get your time back. And that's, um, I, 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 our, to our self-driving team, we're, we're really excited about what this vehicle represents uh, for us. Now, um, I do want to talk just a bit about how we position, you know, laid out the manufacturing system here. And I talked before about battery pack, but every single decision in a vehicle, and I say this a lot, you, you look at a vehicle in the aggregate like this and it, it looks like oh, maybe there was a few thousand decisions. There's millions of decisions that have to be made across thousands of engineers. And those thousands of engineers making those collectively millions of decisions were incredibly focused on ensuring every one of those is not only optimizing for, for what the ownership experience will be, but optimizing our ability to make this very affordable and very accessible. And so the R2 starting price will be $45,000. You can reserve one starting today. Already got mine. Yes. I love that. I'm so excited about this vehicle. Uh, I'm so excited about what it represents for us as a company in terms of achieving scale, what it represents for us in terms of our collective learning being embodied into one vehicle as the, you know, the follow product to what we did with our flagship product with R1. But it's important to note, R2 represents not just a vehicle, but it also represents a platform. And that platform, as I said, the performance, the capabilities, but also the flexibility from a manufacturing point of view is really important for us. And I'm really, really excited to talk about R2's sibling, what? which we call R3.